Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks uh, for coming to our presentation today. Uh, my name is Rani Haibi. I'm the CTO. For those of you, I see some familiar faces here, but for those of you who still don't know me, uh, I'm the CTO of uh, Networking Engine Access at the Linux Foundation. Uh, you might know me from my previous life as um, and a system architect working for various uh, Linux Foundation member companies like uh, Nokia, Samsung, and Alcatel Lucent back in the days. Uh, with me today is uh, Tyler Carpenter, uh, who's the um, uh, CNF uh, workgroup co-chair, one of the co-chairs, and also the co-owner of uh, the Vulp Software Cooperation. Uh, and we're going to talk about the future uh, initiative or where the Cloud Native uh, Network initiative is going with the Linux Foundation. So we're going to do a little intro and I'll explain what I mean by this Cloud Native Network initiative, uh, speak about the motivation and what really brought us here and what are we are trying to achieve, what are our goals, when is it going to happen, the timeline, and uh, I'm gonna speak about how it relates to, we're gonna speak about how it relates to some existing assets that you're probably already familiar with or already active contributing, actively contributing to. Um, and then we'll stay tuned because we're gonna ask for your participation, so uh, please bear with us. Um, so what, what are we talking about here? Uh, I think we all know that when it comes to telecom, everybody's talking about uh, the transition or evolution to cloud native, uh, meaning we want to use uh, technologies that were proven to be efficient with enterprise um, computing, with hyperscalers, and want to bring them in to the telecom domain or networking domain, but the question is how exactly do you do it and where do you go to and what open source assets are available to you? And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about today and this is what this initiative is all about, about uh, helping you to adopt this cloud native technology for networking, whether it's telco networking, enterprise networking, hyperscaler networking, whatever your networking needs are. So in a very basic form or in a nutshell, uh, what we are talking about here is combined, <clears throat> combining efforts, meaning that some of the initiatives that um, existed under the CNCF and were related to uh, networking technologies will merge with some assets that we have at the LF networking. And we're creating <clears throat> a new home for everything related, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> everything related to uh, cloud native functions uh, under one roof under the Linux Foundation networking. Now, a few of the other technology assets that are relevant uh, to what we call cross-domain, uh, cloud native in general will remain under the CNCF and the CNCF will continue to build and evolve them. And as you can expect, we uh, foresee a lot of collaboration between these two organizations, the LF networking and the CNCF. Um, and what we are currently starting with or spearheading is focusing on two fun areas which are certification of network functions and a test catalog to help that certification. Uh, we're also bringing in and keeping some of the work that's been done in past years around best practices and we expect this program to grow over time and add other aspects. And now I'll hand it over to Tyler to uh, provide more details. All right. Um, so the motivation uh, behind it. Um, why, why are we doing all this? So a little bit of a backstory. Um, LFN has been doing networking since it started. That's the kind of the point. And as cloud native was getting going more and more, uh, of course, the networking needs uh, have caused other projects and initiatives to spin up. Um, Kubernetes being cross-domain meant it's going to eventually need to take on more of what's in telecom and, and edge and other things. 
And so that's where, as Lucina had mentioned in 2018 during one summit, the, the concept for cloud native network functions are really we're saying the network applications that are, are applications focused on network uh, functionality, that came into play and so we have CNFs. What do we do from there? So then we ended up with a CNF test bed within CNCF, a telecom user group, which uh, a lot of folks ended up coming from LFN and other groups, and we produced a white paper, and, and then eventually there was the CNF test suite, and then we launched a beta certification within CNCF, and we've had a bunch of products now that have, have gone through that. At the same time, LFN was um, working on more of the platform side and how do we build this out. So the Anikit project, um, specifically on the Kubernetes side, was moving forward. There's a lot of collaboration between uh, the groups. The Cloud Native Principles papers, which uh, tied into the working group and best practices, that went right into the reference architecture for um, for Elephant Anakit. And, you know, we've continued to go forward, but, you know, one of the, what, what we end up with is where do you get started um, on this? So that's, I think, one of the, the main challenges that we had was where do you come in? What, what do you do? So that's why we're trying to bring this unified front and have some type of unified collaboration. So going from there, like the motivation behind it. So we have this continued adoption of cloud native into production. And uh, Deutsche Telekom just launched a 5G standalone network uh, that's running on these Kubernetes-based deployed platform and environment that's using like GitOps patterns and other things. Uh, Orange is doing similar things. They've had a, I think 2021 was their experimental network and that's tying in with Silva and everything. They're trying to have full automation for the network in 2025. So these are like, we're, we're cloud native has been here, but now we're really getting there in production. So there's this need for, um, more testing and validation. That how, do, how do we work with multi-cloud? If you're bare metal, which I've seen a lot of them, or if you're running across clouds, TELUS is running on Amazon with some other 5G core. You have other ones, you know, different areas. So that ties in with this vendor interoperability. So you've got a lot of different clouds. You've got a lot of different um, CNFs and components, whether you're on the core, or all the way out to the RAN, the edge, and um, how do you test? How are you gonna validate? If you have one vendor and, and they're running their pipelines and they think they're good and another one, but how do you actually make sure that you're gonna work well together? And then how does the operation team at a CSP, how are they gonna know? So, you know, transparent validation testing, that's about the interoperability as well. And we're versions, releases. So we're, as we move more to production, the deployments and upgrades, you have the testing and stuff that ties into all of this, but you also have the tooling and stuff for the automation. I was mentioning those GitOps patterns and everything. You have some people that are using Flux CD and Argo CD, and others are doing Flux CD with Argo Workflow, and then you have Nefio project that's doing some similar things. And, operator patterns. <clears throat> so the, you know, these end users, they're wanting to adoptions of this. And I think the testing and validation is a big part in that um, the real strong adoption of automation. And this is not just at the end whenever they're running in production, but I think we're also talking about how to give the creators um, the capability to do the testing and feel confident to get releases out faster. So just a little bit more on the end users. We're, we're talking about the whole ecosystem here. Um, 
everybody is working together and we want this cloud native networking program to be valuable for the whole community. So whether you're a creator or you're an integrator, you're doing open source development, we're trying to make this valuable for everybody. And I think if you're a creator and you can be confident in your CI CD pipeline, then it's going to help you release faster. You're going to lower your maintenance and support effort. If you're a communication service provider, then you know, you're driving those challenges and communicating. And we want to make sure those are out in the use cases. The challenges are up front so everybody understands them. And then relate the best practices there. And then ideally, we're providing test and a test suite that can be used by operators for onboarding. We can put it right in the pipelines. The creators, the developers that are building the different components, they can use the same sets of tests. So we can use it all the way through. And then as a whole, we feel more confident. Um, and maybe it's right there. You know, we've, we've talked with some folks like Microsoft um, for the Azure for operators and others that are interested in maybe even providing testing as a service. Maybe we'll see that. But I think it's important to think about it as a whole. All right. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Randy to go over a little bit of the scope now that we've talked about the motivation. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you got a little bit curious about, okay, what exactly is this program? So uh, the next slides will provide hopefully some more details. Um, so what you see in this diagram, and I'm sorry, it's a bit busy and maybe the not perfect choice of colors with the all the yellow, so I uh, didn't realize that. But anyway, um, I, I wanted to focus on the lower part of this diagram and uh, it shows kind of in this uh, uh, green frame what we're talking about. Uh, and it starts with, uh, on the left, lower left side, with best practices about how to build the network functions and deploy them, and that covers everything from the edge of the network to the core, uh, across everything that's in between. And on top of that, we propose or we plan to have uh, test tools that will help you uh, make sure that you've correctly followed those best practices. And on top of that, there will be a certification, which will be optional. Uh, if you want to go all the way and kind of get your CNF through all the tests and uh, eventually uh, make sure it's certified to follow all the uh, best practices. And, and what you see here uh, on, the vertical, uh, on, on the vertical axis is where we're going to focus. So uh, starting at the bottom with things that are more what we call uh, foundational, uh, we mean things that kind of validate the followings of uh, basic cloud native tenants, uh, which are not specific to any uh, specific network function or any specific implementation of the cloud. Uh, but over time, we hope to add, to add more test and certification that will be more oriented toward our uh, existing open source projects, things like um, Anuket for the infrastructure, things like Nephew for how you orchestrate uh, and manage those network functions, and also uh, maybe further along the line, uh, serving projects like uh, Silva, which uh, is defining how to build uh, a standard compliant uh, cloud native infrastructure for Telco and Camara that deals with the exposure of APIs, but also has requirements for the network function uh, that are providing the, these APIs. So uh, again, it's a, a lot of, uh, uh, different blocks and things that, and, and uh, uh, it may be a bit all over the place, but what we are trying to start with is maybe the lower layers and the best practices, test tools, and certification that uh, we'll talk about in, in more details. Now, you probably are familiar with this diagram. Don't worry if you've seen it for the first time and you're a bit overwhelmed, but if you are familiar with the work of the Linux Foundation networking, I'm sure you've seen this diagram. And this diagram kind of gives you an idea about the ecosystem of open source and commercial offerings that are out there that enable you to build end-to-end -end network services using leveraging the best of open source technology. So this new initiative that we're talking about is not disconnected from, from this landscape. It's actually uh, being built with all this landscape in mind. Uh, I already mentioned a few of the projects that we plan to 
uh, work with or collaborate with in the short term, but uh, over time, we think that we will have more uh, collaboration with other projects, and uh, in general, the goal of the, pro of the initiative is to help you build end-to-end -end networks using these building blocks that are also uh, compliant uh, with the open source and uh, cloud-native best practices. So uh, again, uh, probably a lot of information to absorb for the first time, but just to kind of think, make things more specific, what we are focusing on right now is how to test and certify the cloud native network functions or uh, applications or CNFs as we sometimes call, call them for short. Uh, but uh, in the future, we're gonna kind of uh, expand the horizon and look at things like um, the platform itself, uh, the automation of the deployment, not just uh, the, net, the initial deployment, uh, but also the, uh, the entire life cycle. We're gonna look into things that may be relevant, uh, uh, for example, RAN, or in our case, Open RAN, uh, more specifically. And we're also, at some point, probably are gonna be able to offer uh, project-specific testing and certification, and we mentioned Nephew as one example of a network orchestrator that we're looking to work with closely and uh, create testing and certification that are specific for cases where Nephew is used. Uh, yeah, um, and so I mentioned, te we mentioned tests a lot, and I want to make clear that what we envision is an approach of a test catalog, meaning creating a large set of uh, tests and test suites, uh, but providing them in the form of a catalog, meaning it's not a, a big monolith that you have to use as a whole or, or not, but rather a, a catalog, as the name suggests, where you can pick and choose the tests and certifications that are relevant to, you, to your use cases without having to worry about things that may not be relevant in your use case. So we're gonna, uh, as Tyler mentioned, we are aiming to serve whoever is building and deploying cloud native network functions. So whatever help that adoption, uh, we hope that uh, program will bring. And this kind of modular approach to the test catalog, we think will help with the adoption uh, of this uh, test and certification, meaning that everybody can use as little or as much as they need from that catalog. Yeah, and so I started by kind of highlighting the things we feel will be the short-term deliverables of this program, but we have great plans for, for later, so I'll let uh, Tyler say a few words about that. Yeah, um, so we're coming to the end of 2023, uh, but we're wanting to keep the momentum going, so I think maybe the first thing to say, uh, I'll keep saying it, it's at the end, but the community side, we're wanting this uh, ecosystem to have input from everyone and we are going to try to keep going with the certification and the uh, test development that we have right now, but we want to make sure and keep getting input. So we're going to have a workshop tomorrow I'll talk about in a minute, and you can attend remotely or in person. And um, we have a lot of existing resources. So if you have ideas on stuff that's happening right now that you think would be useful, so whether it's part of the test catalog, tooling framework, best practices, then we want to hear from you and, and keep that going. I think this transition is going to be happening through the end of 2023 and into the start of 2024 as far as the actual tooling and testing and certification going over into LFN. We're gonna keep supporting the existing products that have been certified. And if you're interested in certifying, it's available and working right now. Um, so then, you know, going on with the, the goals and scope that Randy was talking about, um, you know, ideally the project specific, those uh, other communities, Silva and Camara, if there's specific things, like maybe specification or requirements that you think are relevant that are maybe in the Silva project or somewhere else that you think will be relevant across the board, then those are good to highlight um, earlier. And of course, if there's something you're seeing coming up in the future that's aligned, then you know, please
please bring that in. The ORAN uh, compatibility, that's already something that's happening in the test suite right now, the CNF test suite. And if, if there's areas that you're seeing like that for future, it's going to become more important and just bring it up. Okay, so um, a little bit about what we have now. This is definitely a broad area, so I'm not going to try to cover everything. There's going to be some things that we want to keep and then some things that we may say are not aligned. Maybe we're going to keep them, but there should be part of some other area. Elephant is huge. There's a lot of different initiatives happening. So we're really talking the cloud nat native networking focus. Um, you know, the, the certification and test suite, they're working. We also have a lot of material in the Anikit project. Uh, the CNF working group, if you're not familiar with it, it has best practices, a lot of content there. There's a white paper that was uh, published just, or, or a pull request for it on Friday, just this past Friday. And it's actually a follow-up for the NGMN Cloud Native Manifesto. So there's a lot of material that we can build on right now. And then, of course, if, if you know of something else, bring it up. All right, so I already said this, but if you want to get certified, it works right now. Uh, please just try the test suite out. It's supposed to be, it is designed to be a useful tool if you're creating network functions, if you're onboarding them, testing them, it's designed to run in pipelines. Uh, we ha we're going to keep running these community meetings. Tomorrow, we have this alignment workshop. I think we can dig into some of the tools. We have a bunch of topics already listed. If you want to join, there is a limit for in-person. It's actually pretty low. It's only 20. But we are doing a live stream so you can connect remotely. If you want to come in person, scan it, get on the list. Maybe we can get a few more in. We'll see. But uh, please join. All right. Um, so I think for the rest of our time here, we'll just have a couple of minutes, but Q&A. So any questions? You want to go give Gergay? Hi, Gergely from Nokia and Anuket TSC co-chair. So my question uh, to this, uh, whatever the scope, is that it seems that Anuket is out of the scope of this activity. But then this, what we are solving now is that we are moving practically the fragmentation only, and we are not solving the fragmentation. So it should be somehow we should merge these two activities. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, and I, th I think there's so much going on that it's, it's hard to um, com communicate all of it. But yes, we are wanting to merge the activities. What we don't want to say is it's all merging into Anakit or Anakit's all merging into here. I, th I think what we're going to have is some pieces that we know are working right now that we want to continue and some parts that we may not. Probably the easiest to think is there's parts of Anakit that are going to be, whether we keep the names, I, I don't want to think about name changes. I think we will have Anakit as part of the cloud native networking, parts of it, just like we're going to have parts of what came from CNCF. So that will continue. What, Anakit's huge, so I don't know what all we're going to keep. And that's not something we're going to decide in one or two meetings. Yeah, maybe some, some uh, uh, addition to that. So Anuket also has uh, OpenStack related uh, documents. And we are publishing a couple of documents to GSMA. So we have some dependencies what we should consider also. So there, it may end up, and this is to be considered in discussion within, I think, the community and you know the different aspects to this but potentially the some of the OpenStack and other pieces would continue as its own effort separate from this or maybe a subset i, I think that's undecided yeah i think the guidelines Gergay, is to serve best our end users um, and we need to figure out together 
and this workshop tomorrow is part of it, what makes the most sense. Um, so let's try to kind of think about our customers and figure out, I, I, I don't have the answer of what parts of Anuket will go where, um, and we really appreciate the opinion of Anuket leadership on what makes, what they think would work best. And again, we are all in it together to serve whoever is building, deploying, testing, and uh, operating CNFs. Um, I think one other aspect to think what this is probably motivation a little bit, but there's been an effort to maybe take on too much. It's all going to be solved and you're going to be able to be compliant with every single thing, even when it's conflicting. Just don't look that it's conflicting. So we're trying to see if maybe we can shrink down the focus potentially to have here's what we know is going to work well together. Um, when you go, to, and this is also, we're thinking it upstream. So if we look at something like Silva, well, Silva is also thinking about European specific regulations, and then there's other requirements. But if we say we're an upstream resource for Silva and other projects, then we should be more compatible with what they're wanting, and then they can build from it. Any other questions? Kind of two, one, one is very quick. Uh, the QR code for the, that was gone very quick, the forum. Yeah, and the other thing is, um, is there any effort like going on between the Camara project and, and this? Because one of the things, if you take the telco industry from like a high view, it, it doesn't necessarily resonate very well with developers. And usually that's the last thing on the conversation. And if Camara is trying to, that you have this kind of network exposed functions or APIs that work across all the telco vendors, and, you know, and it's particularly the ISPs behind the telco vendors, and then you have the certification process, are you building any bridges to have some like requirements there to, 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 to pull this whole you know, cloud native kind of a, a adoption? And like more specifically, like if you think the, the customer profile on, the, on that side or the kind of end user experience is that, you know, there's this interoperability where app developers and everything can build properly on top of telco networks, not just the basic, you know, SIM card plan where you have data now there, but actually utilizing the cloud native functions that you're, that you're like pushing here inside this kind of telco movement, but actually showing them that this is going to generate more renovation, uh, revenue. Thanks. Um, yeah, Randy probably has some on that too, but. I, I think what you're talking about would tie right in at a, the higher uh, foundational level. So declarative APIs and declarative configuration is co a core tenet. And um, what you're talking about with the APIs would be part of that. And I, I know like DISH networks, they've been pushing for having APIs where everybody can integrate. And there's other um, service providers that are doing similar things. So that's definitely in the foundational side. As far as like Chimera specific, I would say that would be future. But anyone that is involved in any of these projects should try to help contribute upstream so that we build something that's going to be aligned and compatible going forward. Yeah, just to complete that, uh, we kind of try to flesh out our kind of uh, crawl, walk, run approach and starting with some basic things, but definitely we're open and I think we fleshed out Kamara as one of the projects we intend to support in the future, but uh, as Tyler said, it's an open source community effort, so we need people to work on that and if people see value in creating test suites and uh, certification for Kamara um, the project under that program, they're more than welcome to join and start working on that. I think we're over on time now. That's all right. We had a good buffer yeah. anyway. So if thank you have you. more questions, you know, please join this and you can feel free to reach out to us. We definitely want everyone to be part of this uh, new effort. Thank you.